Growing up a fan of Indiana Jones, and after playing way too much Red Dead Redemption, when I heard that the world's largest wooden trestle was within 200 miles of where I live, I had to go. I don't even like the heat. I usually despise it. Yet I continue to find myself in literally one of the hottest and driest places on the planet. Come here without water and you can literally feel the life being sucked out of you with every step. I have found myself here four times in my life. Every single journey came with numerous fails and challenges. But this is a story about the time I actually reached the bridge. We drove a little bit over 150 miles to get here. We're uh, really close to the Mexico border, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on a couple electric bikes and ride. We don't know exactly what to expect because there's been a bunch of rain, so it's possible that the road could even be washed out. But more importantly, um, turns out that the road is a little bit longer than my battery can last. Really, the, the biggest challenge here is gonna be able to budget the battery on my electric bike enough so that we'll be able to make it back because on the way there, it's mostly downhill, but when we circle back and come back, it's gonna be all uphill. So I'm gonna do my best to budget as much battery by just turning it off and, and using old pedal power. And then from there, um, I'll feel pretty comfortable coming back if I have a full battery at that point. But it's all about getting there and being able to explore like a lot of the spots along the way, look for some photo opportunities, and then get to the trestle in time for sunset. Hopefully it won't be too dark on the way home. It wasn't long before we reached the first relic of our trip, a set of old double-decker rail cars that presumably got stuck here when one of the tunnels collapsed. plan is is just to work through a lot of these sites there's some tunnels some bridges but this one seems to be one of the more popular ones so we're gonna check this one out pretty extensively go through take a few pictures and uh, see what we come up with before heading on down to the, the wooden trestle but this is like one of the, the main spots I wanted to stop at on the way out here because just how often do you come across an abandoned rail car in the middle of nowhere, I might not have enough battery to take the uh, full uphill trek back. So we're going to take off right now, start heading to the trestle. time you're riding over this next section you're able to see straight down below if today's the unlucky day when this thing falls down so these bridges aren't maintained this is completely abandoned we're doing this at our own risk I'll do my best to record this this is definitely not a place for the weak or faint of heart is deadly, and some say it's even haunted by the ghosts of ill-fated pioneers from the days of the Wild West. Validated by the words of Bayard Taylor, an influencer of his time, he described this region as scorching and sterile, a country of burning salt plains and shifting hills of sand, 
whose only signs of human visitation are the bones of animals and men scattered along the trails that cross it. The next thing to check out is this uh, rail car that's abandoned up here. Looks like another passenger car, not as big as the last one. We made it to the second rail car, check it out. Looks like it's been completely toasted, so, um, I don't know, that's just my opinion. This one doesn't look nearly as cool as the last one. But what do you think, Brian? We still got like five miles, so probably not gonna cover too much of the area up ahead unless I see something interesting. Battery's still looking good. I'm supposed to only go about 10 miles. Round trip at 16, so if I was running the battery the whole way, I would eventually run out, but I think I'll be able to do it. All right, so it looks like we're getting closer to the end. We're coming up on a set of tunnels. Do my best to film this. Looks like it's not too hard. And uh, we're off. This is pretty cool. seven miles into this ride my battery's more than halfway gone but we're doing pretty good the only concern now is the battery on the way back but hopefully this uh this tunnel right here is the last one and we'll get our our big reveal Ooh. Like we got a little ways to go, folks. Look at how long this thing is. This is ridiculous. All right. I can't believe it, we're actually here. Um, the bridge is incredible to see. The only problem is I spent way too much time on the abandoned rail cars along the way and really haven't gotten enough time to shoot the bridge the way I want to. So I'm feeling like there's definitely a return trip coming soon, but right now we're completely out of time. We're definitely out of light. And uh, now the focus is just being able to, to get back at a reasonable time. So we're heading out. At this point, I still had no idea just how challenging the ride back would be as I did run out of battery somewhere around the burnt up rail cars on the return trip. Make sure you don't miss the next part of this when I head back to the bridge and thank you so much for watching.